Hello, my name is William Mack, and I'm the Senior Application Engineer at the Kemet Application Intelligence Center, which I lovingly call CAIC, spelled K-A-I-C, though. My boss hates that name. But he's not here right now. So welcome to the first episode in a series on how to improve the performance of switching regulators by looking at different output capacitor technologies. The focus of the video will be on output ripple voltage. Ripple voltage is the voltage fluctuations that you see riding on the top of a DC voltage signal caused by the ESR of the capacitor and the fluctuating current flowing out of the inductor. For this investigation into ripple voltage, I chose the TILM21212-2. Hmm, who thought of that name? We'll call it the TILM2 for the rest of the video. What you see on screen is the TI reference board for the TI-LM2. The LM2 is a synchronous buck regulator. It has an input voltage range from 2.95 volts to 5.5 volts, capable of delivering 12 amps of continuous output current and a variable switching frequency between 300 kilohertz and 1.55 megahertz. It is also available in a small outline package, which makes it very easy to hand solder. These features give me the flexibility to explore different power scenarios instead of using a switching regulator that has a fixed voltage or fixed frequency. The IC has everything we need, but the TI reference board doesn't. The reason that I don't use the reference design board is that I can only fit three 1206 ceramic capacitors, and I want to look at more than just that. This design has no on and off switch, no power status LED, and no easy way to adjust the variable frequency. So I created the KAIC RCE001. That sounded a lot better in my head. The RCE stands for Ripple Current Evaluation. But why did I name the board Ripple Current Evaluation? I thought we were looking at ripple voltage. Ripple current is the pulsating current output you see from a switching regulator. The ripple current going through the ESR of a capacitor creates fluctuations in the voltage, which we call ripple voltage. The cake board is a two-layer FR4 board with the flexibility to solder on many different types of capacitor technologies, an on and off switch, power status LED, and the option to choose a fixed switching frequency or a variable switching frequency. All this repeated four times. We will be looking at four different capacitor technologies, ceramic, AO, KO, and aluminum electrolytic. Look in the description for more information on what these are. Here are the ESR and impedance charts of all the different chemical components we will be testing. I know that the ESR of a capacitor is the main contributor of ripple voltage. I suspect that ceramic capacitors will have the lowest peak-to-peak -peak ripple and aluminum electrolytic will have the highest. Now let's move on to the test setup. We'll be using the oscilloscope, power supply, and the DC load to do our experiments. Let's look at the TI evaluation board first. I have the TI evaluation board in front of me and our focus on the circuit will be on the output LC filter, which can be seen here. They are non chemical parts consisting of a 560 nanohenry inductor connected in series to a parallel grouping of three 100 microfarad X5R ceramic capacitors. In order to properly measure ripple voltage, we will connect the buck regular output to a DC load set to draw 3 amps of current and an active power rail probe in order to have a complete picture of the voltage output. Now here we can see that we are getting a DC voltage of 1.2 volts. But if we offset the voltage, change the voltage and time divisions, we can clearly see the AC components riding on top of the DC voltage. This is the ripple voltage caused by the switching regulator's internal MOSFETs sourcing and sinking the input voltage. We have a 77 millivolt peak to peak voltage and a switching frequency at 500 kilohertz, which we will measure momentarily at the switching node with a passive probe. There's also a very large overshoot happening at every pulse edge that is heavily affecting our peak to peak measurement. This is undesirable high frequency noise, which we will explore in a later video. For now, we will limit bandwidth to 20 megahertz on the scope to remove high frequency noise and provide a much clearer image of the ripple voltage. Now we measure a 18.7 millivolt peak to peak measurement, and this will be our baseline measurement for the rest of the video. Next, let's see how the different chemical capacitors compare to the TI evaluation board using CAKE RCE001. 
The circuit is the same, but all the capacitors and inductors are Kemet parts and the PCB has a different layout. Here we have the 5 volt input connected, the DC load is connected here, and the power rail probe is connected here. We'll be looking over the four different capacitor technologies on this board. Let's look at the Kemet ceramic solution first. We have an 8 millivolt peak to peak and a very good looking voltage output. This equates to a 50% reduction in peak to peak voltage measurement compared to the ceramics on the TI evaluation board. The KO capacitor is a solid electrolytic capacitor with a conductive polymer cathode. The KO cap has a 30.8 millivolt peak to peak voltage with a more pronounced triangle wave output. The Kemet polymer aluminum solid electrolytic capacitor has a 23.4 millivolt peak to peak voltage which is around a 25% reduction in ripple from the previous reading with the KO capacitor. Finally, we have the Kemet AO cap, which is an aluminum polymer capacitor. This has a great peak to peak voltage measurement of 13.4 millivolts, which is 19% better than the competitor's ceramic capacitor being used in the TI evaluation board. Let's sum up our findings. Each of the Kemet capacitor technology had a ripple voltage measurement within 3% of the voltage output at 1.2 volts. Depending on your application, this can be very acceptable as not all applications need ripple-free voltage. The Chemist Ceramics gave us the best performance with an 8 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak ripple, which is a 50% reduction in ripple voltage as compared to the competitor ceramic capacitors used in the TI evaluation board. The AO cap had 19% ripple voltage reduction versus the competitor ceramic capacitors, which makes it a good alternative for ceramic replacement if the ceramic capacitor shortage is giving you trouble. The TI evaluation board is just as its name implies, an evaluation board. From our results, you can see it is possible to affect your output ripple by changing your output capacitors. But there is no one type that does it all. A truly robust design takes into consideration pros and cons of each technology and utilizing them to their max potential. We did take note of the voltage overshoot and general noise that was on the output. And in the next video, we'll be going over how to measure and debug noise on your switching regulator. Thanks for watching and see you next time from Cake.